Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we've got some Shadows of Brimstone expansions to show you. Starting with the Blasted Waste, which is a deluxe expansion. Now before we get into this, let's go and talk about Shadows of Brimstone for a second. Shadows of Brimstone came out in 2014 from Flying Frog Productions. It can play one to four players if you have the base game. There's a second base game that will allow you to expand that to up to six players. It's a scenario based game where you can play one off missions or in a campaign system that'll last you several scenarios back to back. And during that time, your characters will level up, uh, earn gold to buy additional equipment and so on. It's a Wild West themed game with a horror slash Cthulhu element to it. So if that sounds interesting to you, you might find these expansions interesting as well. So first of all, we have a deluxe expansion here. Deluxe expansions add substantial amount of content, but mostly what they do is they add an entirely new setting to the game. So as I said, this is a Wild West themed game, which you can probably see from the artwork down here. But this expansion adds a Mad Max post-apocalyptic theme on top of that. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what you're going to get in this. So Flying Frog makes several different types of expansions. We're going to show you two different types here. The first one being the deluxe expansion and the second being a mission pack. We've got a couple of those as well. They do other expansions as well, mostly figure based expansions. Uh, you can actually get plastic miniatures to replace some of the chipboard in this game. The different sort of um, terrain pieces that go out onto the game board. So obviously you're going to get miniatures with this game. And if you don't like assembling miniatures, um, this may not be the game for you. But... What I can say, at least in my experience, is that when a miniature comes on a sprue like this, it's typically the best quality that you're gonna find. So we've got some, looks like some different sandworm figures here. And looks like some human enemies in here. We got what looks like some desert nomad type enemies here. And here are what looks to be possibly new characters. Uh, nope, more, it looks like more nomads. Some axe wielding nomads this time. All right, so then we've got some cards. The cards are used uh, because this is such a modular game. There are so many different elements to it. Um, the, the cards are used to as a randomizing effect for almost everything. So here we've got some uh, minion cards. So you've got a title, some flavor text, uh, experience, their amount of health and any special abilities they have, and then their weapons as well. And you've got a couple of those. Typically when you run into an enemy, you will just shuffle the deck of enemies and draw a card at random. So the more expansions you have, the bigger your um, enemy back the deck is going to be. Got some uh, epic threats here. Looks like some event cards. Some more event cards, 
sand crabs. Those are the figures we were looking at earlier. Some encounter cards. Some of them require skill tests, so they'll say what skill test requires for them. Artifacts, which are always fun. Items you can find. And again, if you're playing in campaign mode, you can actually end up buying these. And then your generic loot. You got some uh, large event cards, which is change, um, change certain aspects of the game. And then some explanation cards, explain the different new mechanics to this one. We got another deck of card uh, cards here. Um, a lot of these are likely to be the map tiles. And ooh, we've got some serious damage to the top card there, unfortunately. Um, but these are the different map uh, cards. So when you go through, you'll just draw a random card It'll tell you where there are doors, if there are any doors. And then there will be event tiles that you'll always add to the different decks. So you've got the deck for the Blast Waste and you've got the deck for the Canyons. You got some more threat cards. Threat is based off of how deep into the dungeon you are. As you get deeper, the threat goes higher and it's more dangerous. You got some darkness event cards, which will go off randomly, or not randomly, but on a track. You've got some more artifacts, and this is just like the other deck of artifacts and the other deck of encounters, except it's for the different, uh, it's for the canyons instead of the other se uh, setting. And you got some encounters for the mine and so on. Got a little Cadillac card. So here are our monster cards. Initiative is pretty simple. The higher you higher up you are, the quicker you go. Uh, you've got combat and damage, and then defense. What defense basically is is uh, it's a, based on a D6 system, and defense is going to subtract um, from your roll range and melee attacks and then it's got different um adjustments uh if it's elite you're going to roll a d6 and it's going to have a, a random adjustment and then obviously their abilities are up here you got some boards here for different things you can purchase different you know, if you run into the mining operation, different things that happen. These are all essentially uh, related to the different events that uh, come up in this game or this particular setting. And then at the bottom here, we finally get to our rule book. So this is going to explain most of how the game works in general. If you get a deluxe expansion, um, even though you do have the core rule book, this will explain most of the rules that you'll require. You've got some, some pre-generated uh, events here, but you can also do just random one-offs. And then you've got a lot of punch board. So this is a dungeon exploration game, an adventure game, or dungeon delver, whatever you want to call it. So there's going to be a lot of map tiles in here. As you can see here, here is the entrance tile, which is new for the game. Generally, you have the same entrance tile. So this is a brand new entrance tile. Double-sided for the two different maps. 
And you've got all these other tiles as well. And these are tiles from that, the deck of map tiles that I showed you earlier. So whenever you draw a tile, whenever you're gonna put out a new tile, you're simply gonna draw from that deck of cards and it's gonna tell you which one to put out. You also got some end caps here. So as I showed you earlier on those cards, there's only a certain number of exit from each tile. So if you go into a tile like this one, there's three spaces. So say you come in here, there's two spaces. There may only be one exit. So you're gonna roll a die and that's randomly gonna become your exit. And you're gonna put an end cap on the side that wasn't your exit, just to show that you can't go through there. In addition to that, we've got some little pieces for the different new elements added to the game. You can find a reclamator during the course of your journey. You got some enemy tokens, resource tokens, a few specialty tokens for the special map tiles you'll find during the course of the game. Some tentacle tokens, in case you ever fight tentacles. There are no, as you notice, there's no tentacle figure pieces, so you'll just use tiles. As I said before though, Flying Frog does a lot of different expansions to their game, and one of the expansions I know is tentacle figures that you can just buy. You got different little tiles here for different special locations that come out. You've got a day night tile, which is, if you've played the base game, is essentially a replacement for the um, danger tile as you get deeper into the mine in the base game. This is different in that it's a day cycle instead of a depth cycle. Just more of the same here more tiles, more special pieces, adds bleeding tokens, adds stun tokens. And this chipboard is well done. It's a little sticky uh, getting them out, but there's no, it's, it's not so thin that you're afraid you're gonna tear it or anything. It's just, it takes a little more effort. It doesn't just pop out like some other ones, but it's definitely sturdy enough. So that's everything you're gonna get in the box. A Couple things that actually I just noticed is some assembly instructions for the different figures, which is certainly handy to have on the side of the box. And if you want to stick around, we got a couple more expansions to go through, a few more de deluxe expansions, and even some uh, mission packs.